Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering Job 17 through 19 and Acts 10, 1 through 23. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Job 17 My spirit is broken. My days are cut short. The grave awaits me. Surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. Give me, O God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? You have closed their minds to understanding, and therefore you will not let them triumph. If anyone denounces their friends for reward, the eyes of their children will fail. God has made me a byword to everyone, a man in whose face people spit. My eyes have grown dim with grief, and my whole frame is but a shadow. The upright are appalled at this. The innocent are aroused against the ungodly. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. But come on, all of you, try again. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed, my plans are shattered, yet the desires of my heart turn night into day. In the face of the darkness, light is near. If the only home I hope for is the grave, if I spread out my bed in the realm of darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother, or my sister. Where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? Will we descend together into the dust? Bildad Job 18 Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, when will you end these speeches? Be sensible, and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger, is the earth to be abandoned for your sake? Or must the rocks be moved from their place? The lamp of a wicked man is snuffed out, and the frame, the flame of his fire stops burning. The light in his tent becomes dark, and the lamp beside him goes out. The vigor of his step is weakened. His own schemes throw him down. His feet thrust him into a net. He wanders into its mesh. A trap seizes him from the heel. A snare holds him fast. A noose is hidden for, for him on the ground. A trap lies in his path. Terrors startle him on every side and dog his every step. Calamity is hunger. Calamity is hungry for him, and disaster is ready for him when he falls. It eats away parts of his skin. Death's firstborn devours his limbs. He is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the kings of terror. Fire resides in his tent. Burning sulfur is scattered over his dwelling. His roots dry up below, and his branches with wither above. The memory of his perish, perishes from the earth. 
the memory of him perishes from the earth. He has no name in the land. He is driven from light into the realm of darkness and is banished from the world. He has no offspring or descendants among his people, no survivor where, where once he lived. People of the West are appalled at his fate. Those of the East are seized with horror. Surely such is a dwelling of an evil man, such is the place of one who does not know God. Job 19 Then Job replied, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourself above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry violence, I get no response, and though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my path in darkness. He has stripped me of my armor, of my honor, and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I groan, till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. His counts, he counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force, and they build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has alienated my faith from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me a foreigner. They look on me as on a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Every, even the little boy scorns me. When I apply, appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me. My friends have pity. Pity for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? On that, my words were recoiled, that y they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, I myself will see him. With my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns with me, within me. If you say, how will, how we will uh, hound him, since the root of the trouble lies in him, you should fear the sword yourselves, for wrath will bring punishment by the sword, and then you will know that there is judgment. 
Okay, that was Job 17 through 19. And now we will be turning to Acts 10. Acts 10. Cornelius calls for Peter. Acts 10. At Caceros, at Cacera, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius started and just stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. And the angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial of offering before God. Now send me men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a, and a devout soldier, who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. And the voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the man sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. And while Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you are looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come for Cornelius, the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. Okay, that was Acts 10, 1 through 23. We will pick up uh, tomorrow with uh, 2 Chronicles 15 through 16 and John 12, 27 through 50. No, this is wrong.
this is better. Now, tomorrow we will pick up with Job 20 through 21 and Acts 10, 24 through 48. Okay, that makes more sense. Sorry, I started over in June again, and I was supposed to be starting with July 1st. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. Because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow because, well, we'll be here, and we hope that you are too.